What is going on guys? Grave here. Today I'm going to talk about some of the class changes coming with update 32. Now, some things on the Sork, uh, the Templar, and the Necro were, you know, either slightly buffed or nerfed, but the two classes that got the major changes, in my opinion, were the Knight Blade and the Dragon Knight. So those are the two that I'm going to talk about in today's video. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, for the Knight Blade, Path of Darkness. Scales with the highest offensive stat, which is going to be a bit of a uh, buff for that particular, uh, you know, uh, ability. Also, that's going to be a thing I think is really going to be great for Knight Blades in PvE. I'm not quite sure if that will be a big thing in PvP. I'm not thinking it will. I, mean, I could be wrong on that. But I think that scaling with the highest, highest offensive stat on Path of Darkness will be big for PvE Knight Blades. Uh, Dark Cloak healing uh, 61 per tick and reduce the duration from 3 to 6. That's actually going to be a slight increase as well. Now, of course, you got, you got to remember within Update 32, in case you did not know, a lot of these abilities they had to change because some of these things were giving you crit, crit chance, all that kind of stuff. You know, they're putting a cap on a lot of that crit in game. So some of these things had to change completely the way that they kind of work. Uh, but that 61% per tick is also pretty good on that Dark Cloak. And also Grim Focus now grants 60 weapon and spell damage per stack, which is going to be up from what it used to be. It used to be 1% per stack, but with the 60 weapon and spell damage per stack, that's going to give you 300 more weapon and spell damage. It's kind of a nerf and a buff, like I said, with that changes to crit. I mean, you look at some of this stuff and you think you're getting more weapon and spell damage, but also you're losing crit with a lot of these abilities. But I thought that one was pretty interesting as well. Now, when it comes to the DK, Combustion Resource now grants you a thousand stam or magic, and that is up from 500 stam and magic. Also, Inferno and Carterized Morph grant major prophecy and major savagery. It used to only grant, I think it was major prophecy. I may be wrong on that, but I think it was just major prophecy. But now it grants both. Uh, Flames of Oblivion now will uh, fire off three fireballs instead of two. Uh, Lava Whip will now, now scale off your highest offensive stat. And I think a lot of stamina players, from what I understood and what I was reading from the public test server, everyone that was playing on uh, PC, of course, you know, I play here on console, so I always have to kind of get my information secondhand from a lot of the people that do the testing there. Uh, I think a lot of stam uh, DKs were really excited because they could use that Lava Whip to spam. Uh, you know, kind of as a, as a spammable, but it still takes mag to cast it. So that's going to be something a lot of stamina characters don't have a lot of. So it's going to be really hard to use that as a spammable. But that Lava Whip will scale with your highest offensive stat now. Uh, Molten Whip. Uh, Fury will last 10 seconds. That is up from 5 seconds. World and Ruin passive. They increase the damage done with Flame and Poison, which is a pretty good increase or a pretty good buff in my opinion. Ash Cloud used to have a big upfront cost, or off the top of my head, it was like 5,600, 5,500, 5,700, somewhere around there. Uh, that will now scale to 378 cost per second. The understanding that I have for this is because of mobile fights, they don't want you to have to use that big upfront cost, and then you don't have to move around, that kind of thing. So now we'll actually just go with a 378 cost every second instead of that large upfront cost when you first cast it. Eruption, the initial damage is a has a 10 second cooldown now. I think they didn't want people spamming eruption was the reason they did this. And also Battle Roar, uh, the passive uh, restores 2050 health managing, uh, mag and stam per ultimate consumed rather than ultimate cost, which is going to be a big buff for DK tanks. I've been hearing a lot of people saying that you can keep a lot of better a lot better resource management when it comes to using your warhorn and things like that. So that being ultimate consumed instead of uh, the ultimate cost is going to be a big uh, help, I think, on the DK side also. Uh, like I said, there were a few other changes, uh, not a whole lot compared. I mean, th there were a few good things, but not as much compared to what the DK and the Night Blade got. I kind of want to let you guys know, if you were DKs, if you are Night Blades, you're going to be getting some pretty good changes to your classes. Like I said, just keep in mind, the crit changes are coming in, so it's going to take a lot of kind of reworking your characters when it comes to gear, uh, when it comes to these ability changes, no matter really what class you are. But when you're a DK, if you're a DK or not, blood, you're definitely going to have to look at some good changes you can make with some of these buffs they've added in, uh, considering you're going to have to change some things up with the, uh, you know, the crit caps and whatnot. But anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you liked the video, hit the like. If you hadn't subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky and Amazon Associates. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.